Well, back to Canberra now. The crossbenchers forced the government to split its industrial relations changes in the Senate. Independents David Pocock and Jackie Lambie secured enough support to split the so-called closing loopholes bill for non-controversial elements of the package have now passed the upper house. That includes help for first responders with PTSD claim compensation and protecting victims of domestic violence from discrimination. Labor was reluctant, though, to split the package, fearing it will never get support for its other proposals like labor hire and casual conversion laws. But in the end, the government didn't force a formal vote, instead allowing it to pass on the voices. Let's hear more about this now. We're taking you live to Canberra. We're hearing here from Senators David Pocock and also Jackie Lambie. They're speaking about that action in the Senate. The urgent ones, but the ones that have, as we saw today, broad support and consensus. It's really up to the government now about the, the timing. What the Senate has said, these four things are important, not controversial, and unanimously endorsed by the Senate. And some of those provisions start 1 January. Better access to, to, to PTSD and flipping the presumption uh, for first responders. If that isn't passed by the lower house this year, then they will be denying those people the right to access that from, from January 1. I'd expecting them to just show some goodwill early next week and just get the job done. That's what you would do when it comes to domestic violence victims, those with PTSD, like I said, um, with what we're doing with the uh, uh, silicosis and, of course, with the solvency. These need to be done, and they're measures that, you know, it is the will, it is the will of the Senate. For goodness sake, do the right thing and put them through. That's what you should be doing. You should be leading by example. Well, yeah, I think there's plenty out there asking for it to be banned. So, mm. you know, and there's certainly unions out there that are saying it, it needs to be banned. Um, and it's something that probably should be looked at. Absolutely. This is a part of the bill. The bill's got to come back up to deal with the rest of the bill. And if we could get the numbers to ban the damn thing, trust me, I'm sure that David and I will be out there and doing everything we can to put, him, put through an amendment to ban the damn stuff. The evidence is overwhelming, and there seems to be real consensus that engineered stone has to be banned. We have to be looking after Australians, tradies who are doing this work, and we can't allow a lack of, of courage or ambition from, from politicians not stepping up on this issue. We saw what happened with asbestos. Yep. We cannot let that happen again. Yep. And so I would, I would urge the government to step up uh, state and territory leaders and the federal uh, minister to get this get this done now. Those four things are up today. Is there any indication about how many people will be able to access either quicker compensation, how many people facing domestic violence, roughly business insolvencies? Do you have any idea how many Australians this would uh, affect come to life? Well, I imagine um, in the years to come there'll be thousands, you know, thousands of them. There's no doubt about that. And if we can look at um, the economics of what's going on now and the businesses that are starting to go into solvency uh, and what is going on there next year is going to be crucial, especially for small businesses.